Welcome to the Beginner's Guide for Manual Controls in iPhone Photography. We're going to be taking a closer look at five videos over the next few weeks. Exposure, Focus, White Balance, Shutter Speed, and ISO. It's not at all surprising that many of you watching this video are a little apprehensive about all the buttons and the menus in the settings in all the photo apps you see on the market today. It's all together way too easy to ignore all that tech talk and shoot only in auto mode. Rest assured, starting today, right now, that as you learn to develop your manual control skills in your iPhone photography, you're going to see a rise and elevation in the quality and creativity of your mobile photography. Now, shooting in manual mode will not guarantee that you're gonna get better photographs, nor is it any sort of guarantee that you're gonna be a better photographer, but I promise you this, learn the why-tos as you learn the how-tos, and you ought to see a drastic improvement in the quality of your work. I've spent the better part of 30 years in my commercial photography career in manual mode. So I know firsthand the absolute joy of applying and learning manual controls to my photography as it relates to the iPhone. In today's video, we're gonna concentrate on exposure. The definition of exposure is so simple. It's the process of letting light through the lens onto the digital sensor. There really is no such thing as a perfect exposure. Exposure is a matter of taste. I like to think of exposure as optimum exposure, where there's sufficient detail in the highlights, midtone, and shadows. So exposure in practical terms means how light or dark the photograph is. And it's always framed in this light. Overexposure means a little light. Correct exposure means average. And underexposure means a little dark, just like the pictures you're seeing here of my model. That is really nice. Hold that. Big smile on this Audrey. There are three factors that affect every exposure you ever take. Aperture, shutter speed, ISO. Aperture is the hole, the opening, or the iris, and it refers to the intensity of light that hits the sensor. This is what the aperture or the f-stop scale looks like in one-third stops. Ironically, because of the small size of the iPhone sensor and lens, that f2.2 is like you are shooting in bright light at f22. If aperture refers to the intensity of light hitting the sensor, the shutter speed refers to the duration of light hitting that same sensor. In full stops, shutter speeds are measured like this. Slow shutter speeds, blur movement. High shutter speeds, freeze movement. ISO refers to the overall sensitivity of the sensor to light. On the iPhone 6, the ISO range goes from ISO 32 to ISO 1600. Low ISO usually means low noise. High ISO usually means high noise. I like to group my ISOs into four simple categories. Zero to 100, great. 100 to 400, good. 400 to 800, be careful. 800 to 1600, watch out. In Camera Plus 6, there's two levels of manual control. Shutter priority, where you pick the shutter and the camera automatically picks the corresponding ISO, or full and complete and total manual control, where you pick both the shutter speed and the ISO. You know, of all the goodies that's packaged in with the new Camera Plus 6, by far and away my favorite feature is the wheel. 
I use the wheel to roll focus. I use the wheel to roll exposure. Uh, and it's, it's so practical and intuitive and it feels so right when you're shooting. Let me illustrate. You can kind of see, a, see the wheel on the bottom uh, when you move it to the left, screen left, it's light. When you move it up or screen right, it darkens the shot. And this is so much easier than finding your exposure point, locking it, and shooting it like the old way. This is swipe exposure. And this wheel, my friends, is so much more practical and intuitive and fun to work with than the stock app. You're probably asking, especially for those of you that shoot just with a native stock app, how do I even know what exposure I'm on? So you have to use a camera replacement app that actually displays live exposure data, and that's what it's called. And by live exposure data, that could mean displaying the numerical values of the ISO and the shutter speed. I use a camera replacement app called Camera Plus. It displays them right inside the viewfinder. I go to settings, I turn that on. They're always on every single shot I take. I have live exposure data on, so I'm able to know what settings that I'm shooting at. So I have my live exposure data on. I know I'm shooting at 1 20th of a second at ISO 61. I'm going to white balance to cloudy so that it adds a little bit of warmth to the scene. Oh, George, you are going to love this shot here. So we're shooting against white, so we're plus one. The camera's going to read all this white and make the shot darker than we want. So to compensate for all that white that the camera meter is seeing, we are going to compensate the exposure plus one EV. That means we're going to brighten it one stop from what the camera's telling us and I think it's really about perfect. That's awesome. It may take you minutes, hours, even days to grasp the basic concept of exposure, but I promise you, and I speak from 30 years of experience, it will take a lifetime of experimentation and testing. Even after three decades of shooting, I'm still learning about exposure every single day day of my life. So my advice and encouragement to you is don't get all freaked out over these manual controls. Relax. Take a deep breath. It's really not that difficult. Start in auto and then move to semi-auto and then move to complete manual. Keep shooting. Rinse and repeat. Do it every single day. I promise you as you see improvements and as you understand the basics of exposure, it will elevate your iPhone photography to new levels. Okay, ladies, last shots of the day. Let's scrunch up. Let's get your body with those shoulders. There we go. And hold on, big happiness.